Bonjour tout le monde, ça va Ça va bien Ça va mal Ça va comme ci comme ça Ok, so it's Miss Henton here guys and I am doing a writing lesson for you so that I can give you a graded piece of work. So imagine this is an extended piece of writing that we would have had in class and this is your preparation for it. OK, so make sure you've got your module for knowledge organizer and you've got your exercise book or a blank piece of paper to write on for the exercises coming up. OK, allons-y. So which topic areas did we cover in this module? Take a look through your knowledge organizer and your books and come up with a list in English. See if you can categorize them as well. No more than three minutes and come back to the video. OK, so hopefully you have seen that we have covered pets, family, where I live and breakfast, also known as les animaux, la famille, là où j'habite and le petit déjeuner. So you're going to have four questions to answer for your writing and they are based on all of these topics. So for les animaux, you are going to have the question, As-tu un animal? Have you got a pet? For la famille, décris ta famille, describe your family. For where do you live? Là où j'habite? Où habites-tu? Where do you live? And for le petit déjeuner, qu'est-ce que tu manges? Et bois au petit déjeuner. What do you eat and drink for breakfast? You will have these on another worksheet and you'll also have some on the um, writing documents that I will have sent to you. We're going to go through these one by one now to give you some ideas. So feel free to pause the video whenever and make notes. So first up, we're looking at les animaux. You have seen this before with un chien, un chat, un oiseau, un hamster, un lapin, un cochon d'Inde, un lizard, un poisson rouge, un serpent, un je n'ai pas d'animal. So, positively speaking, I have a, and then you would finish it off with the animal. And if you didn't have a pet, je n'ai pas d'animal, but if you wanted to go on and say, but actually, I'd really like something, you would use the end of this. So, mais je voudrais un lizard, but I would like a lizard. This would be an excellent sentence because it shows that you recognise what the question is asking you, but you're going a bit further. You're using another time phrase, je voudrais, I would like, and you've got a connective and giving another reason. Okay. But if you have more than one type of pet, how would you change un or une? These are our indefinite articles, guys, to mean a or an. Pause the video, have a look at the sentences here and see how you would change them. OK, so to change the first sentence to say you have a more than one guinea pig. So we have gone for. J'ai quatre cochons d'Inde. I have four guinea pigs. I wish that would be amazing, but here we go. So let's spot the difference. J'ai un cochon d'Inde. J'ai quatre cochons d'Inde. So there's one difference here. Un goes to quatre. We just swap the indefinite article for a number. And we've also added an S to cochon d'Inde because it's plural now. For the second sentence, j'ai un chien, changes to j'ai deux chiens. Same again, un changes to deux, and chien is pronounced exactly the same, but we've just got an S because we're talking about more than one dog. So the key points to remember here are that we change un and une for the number we want, and we add an S to the animal when it's plural. And for the top level, guys, so say you are developing and you want to give more information about your pets, you can give them their name. So, j'ai un chien qui s'appelle Stark. 
I have a dog who is called Stark. J'ai deux chiens qui s'appellent Stark et Peppa. I have two dogs who are called Stark and Pepper. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit of a Marvel fan, in particular Iron Man. So, qui means who. S'appelle is to talk about just one. So if you have one dog, qui s'appelle, no ENT like there is here, because we're talking about two dogs here. Qui s'appelle, but they're pronounced exactly the same. Would be worth you pausing the video to note that down. And when you're ready, move on. So, your challenge now is to translate these six sentences. They are in colour order. Green is the lower level and then red is the higher level. Work your way through in about five to seven, maybe eight minutes and think about what's being used. So we've got plural nouns, adjective agreements, their adjectival position. Remember, it's different in French. So we say in English, a black dog, but in French, they would say a dog black, quite literally. So the first one here, j'ai trois siens noirs. I have three black dogs. But obviously we've got dog here, then we've got black. Possessive adjectives such as my. So you've seen this with family and we'll see it a bit later on. And verb forms, he has, they have. We may not always be talking in the first person. We could be talking about other people. Five to seven minutes, come back for the answers. Okay, so number one, as we discussed, I have three black dogs. J'ai trois siens noirs. Number two, j'ai 98 poissons rouges. Hmm, that's a very long number we've got there. And it is, I have 98 goldfish. You must need a very big tank for that. Numéro trois, j'ai 21 hamster marron. I have 21 brown hamsters. Important that you note that marron stays the same. Numéro 4. Je voudrais 10 oiseaux rouges et bleus. I would like 10 pink and blue birds. Number 5. Numéro 5. Mon frère a deux lizards verts. My brother has two green lizards. So we've changed from the first person here, I have, I have, I would like, to now the third person, my brother has. Possessive adjective to say my, and a is our verb from the infinitive avoir, which is to have. You will find that in your knowledge organizer, and we've seen it a few times before. Numéro six, last one. Mes amis, or you could say mes copains, ont 85 cochons d'Inde blonds. My friends have 85 guinea pigs. Well, that would just be a dream. Important that you choose if you're going to go for mes amis or mes copains. Choose one or the other. Don't go for both because otherwise you'll be saying my friends' friends. Okay. We are still on the question, as you are animal, and this is a model answer. I would like you, for the first level, to read and translate mentally. What do the phrases in yellow mean? So these ones here. And what's great about this answer? Pause the video, have a think, and come back for the discussion. Okay, so let's look at green, read and translate mentally. So, I'm going to read it in French all the way through, and then I'm going to read it in English all the way through. J'ai un chat gris qui s'appelle Bob. J'adore mon chat car il est très cool. Je voudrais deux chiens. Mon frère déteste les chiens car il est stupide. Hmm. I have a grey cat who is called Bob. I love my cat because he is very cool. I would like two dogs. My brother hates dogs because he is stupid. That's nice. So, that is our green. We've read it 
and now we have translated it. For orange, what do the phrases in yellow mean? So we've already discussed this one here, qui s'appelle, who, who is called. This bit here, let's look at this first bit here, car, we know that is a connective and it's the same as parce que. So it's because. Il est très cool. We're talking about the cat and we're saying he is very cool. Je voudrais, I would like. And then the last bit, détestes les siens, hates dogs. So what is great about this answer? Well, this is a good question and it's worth you noting down some key points about how to get yourself as good an answer as this. So we have obviously got a clear answer to the question to start with. Do you have a pet? Yeah, I do. I have a grey cat, but we've then extended it. Who is called Bob? We have got opinions. So I love my cat, but we've gone further. We haven't just said, oh, I love my cat. We've told the reader why, because he is very cool. So we've said he is instead of it is. So that's boosting your level up to a grade five already. Très, that is an intensifier to create emphasis on just how cool this cat is. And there we've got our adjective and we've also got adjectives here to describe the colour of the cat. And right here at the end, when we're talking about how stupid their brother is. We have got two tenses as well. So we've got the present tense. J'ai, I have. S'appelle, is called. J'adore, I love. Il est, he is. Déteste, he hates. And then the second tense is je voudrais, I would like. So that is pushing you up to a six potentially working towards a grade seven and above. We have shown our ability to agree things as well because we have got un chat gris. It is masculine singular, so our adjective must be masculine singular. And we've also shown our ability to change nouns from singular to plural. So instead of just saying, I would like a dog, which would be very straightforward, we've gone, I would like two dogs. Je voudrais deux siens. So there's plenty here, as well as, before we move on, possessive adjective and family, which is all linking back and bringing things together from throughout the module. Okay, lots to take in there. Make sure you're taking as much time as you need before we move on. So our second question, décrit ta famille, describing your family. Here we have a little starter. So dans ma famille, il y a cinq personnes, y compris mon père, ma frère, sorry, ma mère, that should be, <laughs> ma frère. Mon père, we'll start again, mon père, ma mère, mon frère, ma soeur et moi. So, in my family, there is, il y a, cinq personnes. There are five people. Y compris, lovely phrase here. Y compris, it means including. And then these words here that are underlined, these are our possessive adjectives. So, if you're talking about your dad, it's going to be masculine singular because it is mon père. Same for my mum, but it's going to be feminine, so ma mère. And brother and sister are exactly the same, but mon ma. And to talk about my parents, mes parents. That's great for you to include. So if you didn't want to have a list of mon père, ma mère, you could just say, dans ma famille, il y a cinq personnes, y compris mes parents, mon frère et ma soeur et moi. If you've obviously got more than one brother or sister, you just change the mon and ma to the number you want, like we did with the animals. Okay. 
I'm not going to spend too long on this because you've seen this before. It's just to recap on how you can be describing others. So when describing your family, you can talk about your mum, your dad, your brother, sister, and say how tall or short they are, what colour eyes they've got. So il a les yeux bleus, marron, vert. Make sure you've got the spelling correct because these ones have an S, but this one doesn't. He or she has hair, black, brown, blonde, red, grey, short, long, medium, wavy or curly, and red means um, straight. And then they might have a beard, they might have some freckles, des taches, des ressures, or they might have some tattoos, des tatouages. And do they wear any glasses? That's quite interesting for you to note that because he, she is, they have, he, she has, and then they wear, because you literally put them on your face, these, don't you? So, il porte des lunettes, he wears glasses. So, this is just a reminder of the four questions for you, and we're going to be moving on to questions three and four very shortly. Model answer of décret ta famille. Il y a trois personnes dans ma famille, y compris moi, mon père et ma soeur. Ma soeur est grande. Elle a les yeux bleus et les cheveux noirs. J'adore ma soeur parce qu'elle est amusante. So, first level, green. You're literally telling me who is in your family and nothing else. That would sort of be grade two. Ma soeur est grande. We're going a bit further. We're describing my sister, who is tall. She has blue eyes and black hairs. That's why it's plural. Les cheveux noirs. And then we're going even further because we're giving an opinion with a reason. J'adore ma soeur parce qu'elle est amusante. Reason why it is qu'elle here instead of que is because of the, we wouldn't have Q-U-E. And then another word starting with E because it's a vowel. So Q U apostrophe E double L E. Question three. Où habites-tu? Pause the video and try and remember without your knowledge organizer what all this vocabulary means. Okay, so hopefully you have got Où habites-tu for where do you live? And then the following J'habite, I live. Notice how we've got en Angleterre in England, and then au pays de Galles on, uh, in Wales. This is because the countries are masculine and feminine. And then on this side, confortable, trop petit, il n'y a pas de place. And the English is there for you. If you wanted to say, um, instead of the living room, the kitchen, le, la, la, you would just change these for the indefinite article because the is definite article and a and in is indefinite. So le salon, the living room, would change to un salon, un, for a living room. And la cuisine for the kitchen, to say a kitchen would be une cuisine. So, sentence builders, guys, we've seen this quite a lot and I want to take some time to just talk through it because it's been a bit confusing for some of you. You've sort of taken random bits and shoved them together. So, let's see how they actually work. So, you have all these columns and within the columns you might have a few boxes. Each column is a different part of a sentence. And you can just choose the box you want. So I'm going to choose Nu habitant dans un appartement en Angleterre. That's my first sentence because I've got full stop there. So Nu habitant dans un appartement en Angleterre. So I haven't just taken what I want, I've taken what I wanted, but I've only taken one thing from each column. So now I start my next sentence. Je n'aime pas habiter ici parce qu'il n'y a pas de place. And the reason why only this one works 
is because of the QU apostrophe followed by a verb. So, je n'ai pas habité ici parce qu'il n'y a pas de passe. That's how they work. Really important to remember that for the future. Okay, so a model answer. We start with the country, the town, move on to if it's a house or a flat, opinion and justification, and then the rooms in the house. And we're basing it on this photo here. So, country or town. J'habite en Angleterre à Rochem. I've not quite finished the sentence yet because I want to say dans une grande maison, in a big house. If you wanted to say small house, you would just change grand for petite. So P-E-T-I-T-E -E -E because it's mass, it's feminine, sorry. Opinion and justification. J'aime ma maison parce que c'est moderne et tranquille. I like my house because it is modern and quiet. The rooms. Dans ma maison, il y a deux chambres. Une salle de bain, une salle à manger et une cuisine fantastique. So, we've got two bedrooms, adding an S. A bathroom, a dining room and a fantastic kitchen. This is what I was saying about changing la or le for une. So instead of saying there is the bedroom, the bathroom, I've changed it to il y a deux chambres. There are two bedrooms, a bathroom, une salle de bain. Okay, the last question guys. Qu'est-ce que tu manges et tu bois au petit déjeuner? This little text up here. See if you can remember what these are. You've got some photos to help you down here and then we'll just have a quick discussion about the vocab. Okay, so hopefully you have found these as your answers. And you've seen this text before. These are sentence starters from our Mon Petit Déjeuner lesson. And I just want to remind you of the partitive article. So, de, 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 de. The reason why we have de is because you wouldn't really say I eat a bread. You're going to say I eat some bread because there's not really a quantity for it. So, je mange du pain. I eat some bread. Je mange du pain gris. I have some, um, I eat some toast. Avec du beurre. With some butter. Okay. Key verbs to remember for question four. So, manger, to eat, and boire, to drink. This is irregular and it's important to note that the spelling here for we eat is slightly irregular as well. So, je mange, tu manges, il est mange, on mange, nous mangeons, vous mangez, il est mange. And then, je bois, tu bois, il est bois, on bois, nous boivons, vous boivez, il est boive. Remember to push yourself and talk about others. This will get you to the top level. Okay, so this is the last slide, guys. So, you can use your knowledge organizer and any notes from previous lessons, but you cannot use online translators. It's very obvious for me to see, especially when I have given you the vocabulary saying j'habite, and then you've gone and written je vis. Yes. Je vis does mean I live, but that's very advanced and I want you to stick to j'habite. Your success criteria is as follows. To use a range of specific vocabulary relevant to each question. So that's what I was just saying. So j'habite. Give justified opinions. Don't just tell me you like or dislike something. Tell me why. Talk about other people. I've also added here how you can say what he, she or they likes, loves and hates. So be worth you noting that down. And use je voudrais to introduce another time frame. I will have attached a document for you to write your answer in and to submit to me as the instructions indicate on the homework planner. It's really important that you look at the grade descriptors as well. So if you're struggling a bit, you can have a look at working towards grades one to two, which is like three short sentences. 
uh, working towards grades three and four, that's five short sentences. And then going up and up and up, it goes to full sentences and then a short paragraph. Any questions, please get in contact with me and go through this video as much as you need. Otherwise, merci beaucoup mes étudiants et à bientôt. Au revoir.